other one. Join me, let's open our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 4 and 12. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For like the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This is also vanity. Surely oppression destroys a wise man's reason, and the bribe debases the heart. The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and profitable to those who see the sun. For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. We may all be seated. In your program, we have a song entitled The Wonderful Grace of Jesus. How sweet it is to sing the name of our Lord and Savior. And I request everyone to please join me as I end this song. And uh, let's sing this song with a happy heart for what God has uh, done in our lives. Let's sing this song, The Wonderful Grace of Jesus.
for the solacy and offertory prayer. May we request our gentleman, Pastor Bachelor from Subic, Pastor Jomar Baredo. May we call in our, our college choir, uh, directed by our beloved Dr. Florence T. Isidoro.
Thank you so much, College Choir. Before we pursue, we would like to uh, recognize the presence, the presence of our uh, president for IBMF uh, Philippines, Dr. Hermine Hildo Patubo. Uh, to introduce our speaker this evening, may we request Dr. Edward M. Isidore. Thank you, Pastor Dennis, and uh, good evening to all of you. Also, we would like to recognize all the alumni of IBTC and the Bible School and the College. We would like to start with the Bible to the Bible School and the College. Say, welcome to America. Really, it's an honor for us to be all returning for all your your alma mater. Tonight it's an honor for us to be able to have our speaker. Actually, he's a good friend of ours. He's like a brother to me. We've, we've been known for like 34 years already since uh, him and uh, a group of uh, pastors in Japan coming over and uh, helping and building relationships. With us, uh, with Pastor Davino and the IBM churches. And since then, they've been helping in part of the ministry. And uh, tonight, it's an honor and a privilege to us to be our 43rd commencement exercise speaker. Our speaker tonight uh, finished his Bachelor of Art in 1979 at Grand Rapids School of the Bible and Music. And then after he finished his uh, bachelor, he went to be a missionary to Guam by transfer the radio in 1979 to 1982. And then he went back to study and finish his Masters of Divinity at the Master Seminary in 1992. In fact, uh, his eldest uh, son will be finishing his Masters of Divinity also next month in May. That's why he's going back to America to witness the ceremony. And he's married to Miss Mayumi and they have three children. Then the Lord called them to be the senior pastor of Hamadera Bible Church in 1983 in Hamadera, Osaka, Japan. He is a pure Japanese, but, but his heart is uh, almost a Filipino because he loves uh, a Filipino and the ministry here. And he loves Palu although he doesn't want to eat it. So I don't know. But uh, tonight, it's a privilege that we could be happy and be our speaker, speaker for this for the third commencement exercise. Our speaker for tonight, Dr. Sudi Kon. This is the lesson you continue to learn, graduates. 
it is the most important lesson you can learn. Because it's the only way that you can honor God and you can glorify Him. I still remember 43 years ago, I was going to America to study. And by that time, my father was a believer, so I had to refuse any kind of support from him. Because I said to my father, God is calling me to America to study. So he will provide for my needs. So the passage I memorized, the passage I hold on to, was Philippians 4.19. Again, I'm sorry that I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You all know the scripture, right? But the question is, do you really practice this? Do you really believe for God? Yes, God will provide every need as He promised. I'm sure that you are the witness of faithfulness to God because God has provided everything that you need during the school years. Isn't that true? God provided. Every single means. That is almost like assurance, isn't it? God wants you to be here. It's fine, is it? God calls you here, and He has promised you that He will provide every means. But that's not the end of it. He will continue to do so. You know, this Philippian church, they were not a wealthy church. In fact, they were very but the scripture tells us that they were willing to give sacrificial. Many churches in Macedonia, they were doing that. You know why? Because they trusted God to God. This is an amazing truth, isn't it? We try to keep it, keep it ourselves. Because if we're going to give away, we'll lose it. It's a worldly mentality, isn't it? The Bible said, you give and you receive. Because he said he will provide every need of yours. As you notice that in the scripture, it doesn't say that all your desires will be fulfilled. Every desire of yours will be met. It didn't say that. Every need of yours. This question talking about all of your need. It's a great assurance, isn't it? As you move on, God has promised you this wonderful truth that you are going to learn every day. Yes, God is okay. You understand that God will continue to provide you physical, material needs we have. End of March, that's the end of our fiscal year in Japan. So every last Sunday, the last Sunday of March, every year, we celebrate. Looking back all year and thanking God for what He has done for us. We praise God for His faithfulness. And I think I've learned throughout my Christian life, actually, 49 years ago, I came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And through that 49 years, God has taught me over and over again. Don't worry about it. I will go on. So when I see that, like a treasure report, financial report from our church, shortage in this and shortage in that, my heart would kind of excite well, see the fact we have a need. I'm excited how God is going to meet this need. That's something we can say because God has promised us He will meet every need we have. 
this promise is not just a materialistic needs, but I think your emotional needs, your spiritual needs are going to be met as well. You know, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Apostle Paul said this. So we do not lose heart. I'm reading verse 16. We do not lose heart. You know, this lose heart, this Greek word is to become discouraged. So Paul is saying, no matter what happens, I won't discourage. He has mentioned to us in even this chapter 4, he has said, from especially like verse 8 and 9, he said, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecution, but not for shaking. Struck down, but not destroyed. It's very interesting testimony that Apostle Paul did. He said, first of all, he said, afflicted. What does that mean? This means under great pressure. That's what it is. Physical pressure from all the persecutors. Emotional pressure. He has ex experienced things most of us never experienced. He was under great pressure. Physically, emotionally. But he said this, not crushed. What he is saying is, even though under any kind of pressure, God protected me. God let me. That's a great assurance he had. Secondly, he said, for perplexed, in verse 8, he said, perplexed, but not driven to despair. You know, there are things that confuse us time to time. Sometimes we think about why. I think we ask this question often is that why is this happening in our lives? I'm sure Paul had the same same thing. But he said this, but not driven to despair. Because God is the one who delivered him from any kind of personal situations. And number three, he said about persecuted, but not forsaken. We all understand he has persecuted so much. Second Corinthians 11. He lists a whole bunch of lists that he has been persecuted. And he said, even though God never was sitting, God was always with me. When he was stoned to death. You will face a lot of difficulties. And you will face a lot of persecutions because you want to be faithful to God. And if you want to be faithful to God, we all expect some kind of difficulties because this world doesn't like that. When Jesus Christ was on this earth, they persecuted him. They sent him to cross, even though this was God's will. People hated Christ. Christians, when you grow in Christ, 
the world will see you, the world will see Christ in your life. That's why they were preaching. But Paul said, even though any kind of persecutions, God never will save you. It's one of the assurances that is always with us. And lastly, he said, struck down. It's almost like a thrown away. Difficulty, heartaches. But he said, but not destroyed. This word is like, they did not rule. Living for Christ is more than the things in your no life. People do persecute you. People mock you. People laugh at you. But if you are faithful and obedient to God, even though whatever experience you have, you won't be ruined. You won't be destroyed. What about the uh, anxieties? I think we have experienced it. We will experience salt. in chapter 4, the passage we are looking at, the Bible to open it, Philippians chapter 4, in verse 6, he said, do not be anxious about anything. So what this scripture teaches us, you will experience all kinds of anxiety, but the Lord will help you over You might worry so many different things, but God promised that. He will protect you, protect you, and He will need every, He will provide everything what you need to overcome that. And I want you to see this passage. Look at it. verse six. He said, "Do not be anxious about anything." But in everything by prayer and supplication, with what? Thanksgiving. Let your requests be known, be made known to God. This is how we can do this. We thank the Lord for all the anxieties, all the things you kind of concern about, worries you, but you still thank the Lord. Paul said, my God will supply for your needs. No matter what, what kind of situation you were in, God is with you and God will provide you everything that you need. Be bold, Christians, because our God is the mighty God. You send that. You speak about it. And you believe. <laughs> you know, as we walk our Christian life, we need God's help. We're thankful that God is providing our help. Paul learned this lesson. He thought about thorn in the flesh. Probably he thought about if God removed this. And certainly more God said, oh, no. my grace is sufficient. For oh, my power is made perfect in See, our problem is we try to do everything by your own strength and your wisdom. You are trying to do the things which enable you to do it. We need to learn to trust in God. He is our strength. He is our wisdom. All we need to learn that. So that's why he brag about his weakness. And he goes.
No. This Philippians 419. He said this. And my God will supply every need of yours according to according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This proposition, according to, why did Paul put this word? What he's trying to say is this. This word, according to, is suitable So God, who is perfect, He will give you in proportion to His riches. What He's talking about, He's going to abundant each of you. He won't just give you some of these small riches, you know? What He gives in proportion to His riches. Christian rejoice. Our God promise us He will meet every single need of yours. Because through this, His name is lifted up. Because we all praise Him. Because we all know that this is not Somebody said this. Standing on the promises, you know, the song, you know the song. Somebody said this. Little faith will bring will bring us to heaven. Little faith will bring us to heaven. But great faith will bring heaven to us. Graduates, we're going to learn. Every day. What a joy it is to trust in God. What a joy it is to see God's work in your life. The world is waiting. They are crying out, show me your God is the real God. He's not dead. He's alive. And you are going to show that. Keep trusting. Keep beating to God's word. Charles Wesley, he said this, faith, mighty faith, that promise, promise sees, and looks to God alone, laughs at impossibility, and cries, it shall be done. Faith, mighty faith, that promise sees, Promises and looks to God alone, laughs at impossibilities, and cries, It shall be done. We can trust our God, because He has left you at this moment. He will continue to lead you, guide you, and use you. Because God has chosen you. We praise God for you. Continue to show forth for a great God.
of April 2019 on this 43rd Seminary College Commencement Ceremony held in Mandalay International Bible Church. Signed, this is Imanda Tapa, College Red Skirt, Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Morris P. Isidoro, Dr. James Limitica, Dean of Seminary Department, Let's sing another song in your program book. I'll be good in your program. Let's sing the solid rock. Major in English, please stand. Mr. President, Dr. Edward, Edward Isidoro, the Dean of Education, Dr. Torrance Isidoro, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for graduation leading to the course of Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English for the school year 2018-2019. They have satisfactorily completed the requirements prescribed by the Commission on Higher Education. President of the National Baptist College and Seminary, 
And upon the presentation of the school registrar, I hereby confirm you the degree of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English, with all the rights of the
I just want to refer you to the degree of Bachelor of Secretary of Asian Major in History with all the rights and privileges attached to This is titled Stress and Coping Mechanism of Junior School Students in International Baptist College. Iglesia Kirby Jane J. and academic 
achievement of elementary students at International Baptist College, Baharto Sharpie. Good evening, po. My life verse is Psalms 37, po. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. among grade 4 to grade 6 in International Baptist College. Laudato Justice. Of ministry inside the church. 
it comes with a one year, a two year, and a three year degree program. Uh, also, next year, the coming school year, there will be two strands. One is in uh, ministry and leadership, and the other one is in missions, starting this coming semester. But for this year, for the Institute of Biblical Leadership and Impact Institute, we'd like to ask the candidates to please rise. Our president, Dr. Ms. Dora, our guest speaker, Dr. Shuli Kojo, and uh, our academic dean, Dr. Flores Tigris Dora and faculty. It's my honor to present to you the candidates for the diploma uh, for our Institute of Biblical Leadership. They have satisfactorily completed all the necessary requirements in order to achieve the diploma term. International Baptist College for seven areas of residence and a final presentation of the school registrar and vice president. I hereby confer to you the degree of associate in Bible diploma with all the rights and privileges of that service. Gala Alexander. My last verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
to exist. With men, it is impossible, but with God, all things are impossible. And we will continue the graduation rites tomorrow. Our president, Dr. Ristoro, our guest speaker, Dr. Sergio Ponzo, our uh, academic dean, Dr. Flores Isidoro, they're all faculty. We have a loaded candidate for uh, the Bachelor of Religious Education degree. Would you please rise? You may be seated. <laughs> Sirs and madams, it's an honor for me to present to you our local candidate. She has satisfactorily completed all necessary requirements in order to achieve this degree. By the virtue of the authority vested upon me by the Commission on Higher Education as the President of the International Public. Upon presentation of the school minister and the vice president, I hereby confer this degree of Bachelor of Arts in Religious Education with all the rights and privileges attached to it. Julian Bernadette. Our president, 
Governor Visitor. Our speaker, Dr. Shoji Kondo. Our academic team, Dr. Flores Isidoro, and the rest of our faculty and staff. We have also a Lord Cabinet for the Bachelor of Theology degree uh, from the old curriculum. Uh, actually, from the class of NCA. Thank you. He has satisfactorily and finally, um, and without impurity, finally completed all the requirements in order to achieve this degree. By the virtue of the authority given to me by Dr. Gabino Pita. Kalbun. Nasama ko na siya. As president of the University of Papua, and it's a seminary. And about the presentation of the school at this time. I hereby confirm you the degree of Bachelor of Theology with all the rights and privileges of that subject. Crucified in Christ, never to the last day I live, yet the time of Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me.
Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2. I look up unto the mountains from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven.
I've always wondered, as many times as I have uh, done this honor, Yeah. What the charge to the graduates were supposed to do, as many times as I myself have heard it. And we've come to the conclusion that the charge of the graduates means that uh, all the electricity charges will be charged to your account. <laughs> today. Life has two purposes. First of all, to guide the lost. That is your duty. Second, to expose the counterfeits that like to hide and stay in the dark. That also is your duty. Both of these things were designed for both of you. You all are being called to a dark place by God so that you could shine bright. And so I ask you to shine. Not just to shine, but to really shine. To be what you were designed to be. No shortcuts. Do what God says. Because when God called you, He called you for a purpose. To execute and to follow succinctly His design, His design for you. For your sakes, God follows that desire. Don't take the easy route, as many would. It leads to nowhere. And will land you on empty and hollow spaces. They will look good and they look attractive, but nonetheless, still empty. If you become wounded from the bullets of an enemy or a friend, Keep serving anyway. Don't waste your time trying to heal yourself. That's the Holy Spirit's job. As the great Brendan Manning beautifully wrote in his book, he says, In love's service, in God's service, angels will bow their wings. Physicians will step aside because only the wounded and truly serve. Keep following Jesus. Always remember that discipleship is not merely stating one's allegiance to Christ. Neither is it a presentation of an abundant manner of living that makes people look in disbelief or disgust because it makes them feel inadequate or undeserving of God's grace. Discipleship is much more than that. True discipleship unites the practical, the behavioral, the spiritual change that reflects the beautiful work of Christ in you. It reflects real life change, one that is intriguing, sometimes controversial, but yet altogether beautiful in the eyes of the one who cannot understand and cannot know what it is, but deeply yearns in his heart to have what he sees you live out boldly and loudly for Christ. I pray that you would live such compelling lives that it becomes impossible for the greatest, most arduous skeptic to resist the great message that is being lived out right in front of his eyes by you. I pray that you would live and that you would work and that you would minister, and you would breathe, following Jesus. Only then can we truly make a difference in this country. I charge you with that. Father, we praise you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the honor to share this great moment with the students. They are no longer students, they are graduates. But Lord, may they ever always be students. Because Lord, once a leader stops learning, he stops sleeping. So Father, I pray that you would give them a desire to try, not only to, to learn more, but to transfer, to live 
such transparent lives. Because Lord, our country doesn't need more teachers. Our country doesn't need more theologians. Our country doesn't need more mega churches. Our country doesn't need more politicians. Our country needs people, true followers of Christ, who will live their daily lives and impact others for Him. May you challenge each and every one of these people today. Not only those who are graduating today, but even those of us who listen and watch and have seen all that we have seen today. Father, I pray that you would do that. We praise you and give you glory in your name and prayer. Amen. May we pass the reminder to please rise for our benediction. May we fall on the floor and work. Father in heaven, we thank you for what you have done throughout the year. Thank you for the spirit who have recently worked hard to finish their courses. And we thank you for giving them strength and uh, stamina to be able to stand during the trial. Thank you for the Spirit of God who works in them. And these students, graduates, will continue to honor you and trust you. We also pray and continue to thank the parents and loved ones that are part of the students, whom we live together, work together for the achievements of this one level of the poor. Continue to provide them with their needs and provision and lead them, Lord, toward, towards the uh, success that they are dreaming of and looking for. We thank the Lord for the institution, the faculty and staff and the administration, the, even the lowest position in this institution that give part in order, in, in order to, to achieve this day of recognizing our graduates. Continue to bless us more than use this institution, not only for just the gain or material profit, but for the purpose of seeing young people follow you, serve you with all their hearts and with all their mind and with all their strength. Give them, Lord, the desires that the bottom line of each that we do in this world is to glorify your name only. Because we believe and we, we know, Lord Jesus, that without you we cannot do anything. That all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And Whatever happens, we do not know what will happen, Lord, for the next couple of years. But we trust in you, we just honor you, we just look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because whatever happens, everything was done just to glorify your name. And Father, as we end and close this ceremony, I pray, Lord Jesus, that what remains here will be the Spirit of God that deals and convicts people. And everything we need in this world is Jesus as Savior. And for the raising of the heirs of thy servant, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now unto him that is, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. amen.